Hello, today we'll look at how we can find out what the cause of hypokalemia is. Usually we know the cause by just uh, asking the patient what happened, so we take a regular anamnesis. But sometimes we have no clue of what the cause of hypokalemia is and therefore we have some urinary test that we can do. So we will ask the patient to urinate during 24 hours and we will collect this urine and then we will measure the potassium level in it. If it's more than 30 millimole of potassium excreted in one day, then we can be quite sure that it's somehow related to a kidney problem or something that is uh, affecting the kidney. If it's less than 30 millimole per day, then it's probably another cause. For example, diarrhea or vomiting or, or some other cause. And therefore, the most accurate test to do is to make a 24-hour urinary potassium excretion test and thereby we check this urine or, and the level of the potassium in it. But if we don't have time, for example, if the uh, hypokalemia is so severe that we don't have time to wait 24 hours to, for this collection, then we can make a spot urine an analysis. This means that we take just one sample of urine and in this one sample of urine, we will measure the potassium level and we will compare it to a creatinine level. And if you make a ratio of this, so we take potassium, divided by creatinine, then we get a ratio of more than 1.5. If we get that, then it's probably a kidney problem as we had uh, when we had more than 30 millimole of urine, uh, of uh, potassium in the urine per day. The same here, if we have a ratio of more than 1.5 of potassium divided by creatinine, that's probably a urinary uh, probably a kidney problem. If it's less, then it's another cause. For example, as we said, diarrhea and so on. And in order to make a differential diagnosis, that means that we are differentiating between diseases, then we need to add also acid-base status. Acid-base is simply um, telling us which pH the, uh, the body has. So, for example, if we measure the pH and it's more, uh, more than 7.45, for example, then it's alkalotic, so it's alkali. And if it's less than 7.35, then it's acidosis. So we have alkalosis or acidosis, depending on the pH. And therefore, with this and the level of potassium in the urine, with this we can differentiate between diseases. So, we have four uh, four possible ways now because we have two possible uh, pH values that we can have alkalosis or acidosis and then we have two possible potassium level is it either more than 30 millimole per day or is it less than 30 millimole per day so two times two is four so we have four possible ways and if we have them, we have a hypokalemic patient this means that the patient has a low potassium in his blood that is the main, main, main patient here. And we have now a patient who has hypokalemia, low potassium in his blood, but together with a high potassium in the urine, because we are measuring in the urine now, it's two things here, because one is having a high or low level of potassium in the blood, but another thing is to have high or low level in the urine. So here we have a patient who has a low level in the blood and he has a high level, for example, in the urine. That is then somehow related to kidney, as we said. Then we know that it's somehow related to the kidney. Either it was more than 30 millimole per day in this 24 hour period, or we had this spot test where we had more than 1.5 of ratio of potassium to creatinine. And let's see now, I have drawn some examples that I will give you now. So if we have then low level in the blood of potassium and high level in the urine, then we know that it's kidney and we need to then add this acid base status. And if we have an acidotic state, which means that the pH is less than 7.35, then we can have something called diabetic ketoacidosis or renal tubular acidosis, these two cases. So remember, we had a patient with low potassium in the blood, we had a high potassium in the urine, and 
he had acidosis, so a pH less than 7.35, then we are not sure that it is di diabetic cat ketoacidosis or renal tubal acidosis, but it's indicating that it could be DH2. If, if, it has, if it's alkalosis instead, so we have a, a high amount of potassium in the urine, but we have alkalosis, then it can be diuretics, it can be primary aldosteronism, Gittelman syndrome, or Barter syndrome, or we can have um, renovascular disease. So these are the cases when we had a patient with low potassium. All the cases here are, have low potassium in the blood, but he had a high potassium in the urine and we had an alkalosis. And now if we take now the two other examples of when we have low potassium in the urine, that, mean, that means uh, that we have less than 30 millimole per day or we have less than 1.5 of potassium creatinine ratio. Then if it's if it's acidotic, then it's diarrhea, and if it's alkalotic, then it's vomiting. Okay, and this is very hard to remember just like this. So this is an algorithm, and just to make it stick into your mind, we'll repeat it once more, or maybe twice more, okay? So, the patient comes in, we measure the blood, we see that the patient has hypokalemia, that means the the potassium in the blood is low. What do we do? We don't know the cause. So we make this urine test. We don't have time. So we will make a spot urine. We don't have time for waiting for this 24 hours. So we will measure the urine and we see that the potassium creatinine ratio is less than 1.5. Then we know that the potassium in the urine is low. So it's probably not a kidney problem. Then it can be either that the patient has been vomiting and how can we check that? We check that by looking at the acid base. Is it alkalosis or is it acidotic? If it's alkalosis then it's vomiting. Is it um, acidosis then it's diarrhea. So alkalosis vomiting, acidosis diarrhea. Okay that was the case. This was the two cases where we had a very low urine potassium. Now let's turn to the high potassium urine. That means it's somehow related to the kidney. And we said if it's acidosis, so it's a low pH, then it can be diabetic ketoacidosis, as you hear in the name, diabetic ketoacidosis. And also tubular, renal tubular acidosis. These two all end with acidosis. So therefore they are in acidotic patients. So these two are very simple to remember. And when we had alkalosis, and we had this high amount of potassium in the urine, then we have many, many things. Diuretic use, or we had primary aldosteronism, or we had these two syndromes, Gittelman or Barter's syndrome, uh, or we had renovascular disease. These are the five things that we can get. This was the second revision. Let's make a third revision just to make it stick into your mind and into myself because it's, it's, it's pretty hard for me to, to, to remember this. And therefore, usually as a doctor or uh, as a patient, the way, uh, the way one does this is that you have to write it down or you have to download this algorithm and then you can check it by going through this algorithm. Because you cannot, you cannot remember all the stuff in medicine. Most of the things uh, should be a logical understanding. And if you understand something logically, then you can find the information you need. You need to be able to search for information. And therefore, it's not so important to memorize this, but if you do, then you will not only impress uh, your doctor colleagues or as a patient, you will not you will you will impress your doctor okay or uh, as a student you will impress your teacher and as a doctor uh, you will quicker find a therapy solution for these patients so therefore i think it's very good to to at least try to memorize these things so we will take a case here as we said the guy has hypokalemia because we saw that the potassium was low in the blood in the blood 
We don't know the cause, so we checked the urine, spot urine, and we, uh, we saw that the level of the potassium creatinine was two. That means it's a high ratio because it's more than 1.5. Then we know that it's some, somehow related to the kidney. Can it be then? What can it be? It can be ketoacidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis. It can be renal tubular acidosis. It can be Gar uh, Gittelman syndrome or Barter syndrome. It can be renal vascular disease. It can be primary al aldosteronism. How do we know which one of these we have? We check the acid base level. Is it acidosis? Is the pH in the blood less than 7.35? Then we know it's somehow related to acidosis. And these two names, what we had, the diabetic ketoacidosis and renal tubular acidosis, yeah, probably one of those. Is it alkalosis? Then it's probably one of the others. Gittelman syndrome, Barter syndrome, renal vascular disease, or is it primary aldosteronism? So then, and, and of course, the, the algorithm then can move forward, but that will be dealt in another video. For example, if you have primary aldosteronism, then there exists certain tests for checking that. So this, this is like a labyrinth that you are elaborating as a doctor or as a patient, and then you find out the cause. And it takes some time, but it's very useful because if you find the cause, if in, and if you treat the cause, then it's better uh, treated than if you would randomly uh, just assign some uh, treatment to this patient without knowing the cause. So please always try to find the cause and always try to treat the cause, okay? So uh, let's repeat once again. Hypokalemia, low level in the blood. We check the potassium in the urine. We see that it's less than 1.5. And then we know it's not related to kidney. So it's either vomiting or diarrhea. It can, it can of course be many other things, but these are the two most common ones. If, if it's vomiting, then we know it's alkalosis. Is it acidotic, then we know it's diarrhea. Okay, and these are the two cases of that. And as we said, once again, if the potassium level in the urine is high, then it's kidney. And we, we mentioned all these things. If it was uh, acidotic, then we had this diabetic ketoacidosis or renal tubular acidosis. And if it was uh, alkalotic, then it was these syndromes, Gittelman and Barter. It was renal vascular disease. It was primary aldosteronism and so on. And one and, and diuretics, of course, because diuretics are very common medications that you give patients. For example, if you have a hypertension patient, then you need to give diuretics, and usually diuretics can cause then hypokalemia. And we will see that by having a, a very high urine potassium and having alkalosis. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening.